Hi there, it's Ina here and welcome to my art room. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and please push the bell icon so you will receive notification of all my regular uploads. So something different today. I want to do a weave and for that I picked up a square sturdy picture frame. I will be coloring it with black acrylic paint. I will also sand it afterwards for a bit of a distressed look. And then I start with very thin but sturdy yarn and go all around my frame. Now the idea for this very uncomplicated simple weave did not come from me but I saw it in a video by Mark Montano and I will put the link to that below in my description box. Of course I will change up the design and do it my way and I prepared already some pieces of fabric including some very colorful ones. Now there are different ways to cut your material, especially if you're trying to use up leftover pieces. You can either just cut them in a zigzag like you see here and those corner pieces will not disturb your weave. Or if you need longer pieces, you can just attach two together by this very simple method is just cutting a hole into both pieces, looping one of the pieces through, and then looping it through its own hole. And when you pull it tight, it does have a little knot, but again, it doesn't really disturb your weave. Now for this simple weaving project, I did not need very long strings, so it was a perfect one to use up all the scraps I had left over from one of my last projects. Now I did want to attach some beads, but realized I didn't have any with a hole big enough to go through the fabric. So I will use them with a thin thread instead. And for the type of irregular random placement of these beads, this will work just fine. You will see. Now I have never done a weave before, maybe when I was in kindergarten with paper, but I want to give it a try. So this is my prototype and I was attracted to this type of weave because it's so random and so irregular and it's not a matter of counting strings or being exact and that really appealed to me. It's a very relaxing project. So I added all the beads to my yarn and can now start preparing the frame for weaving. I knot it at one corner here and then just go around and around. And right from the beginning, I don't have to be careful that the distance of the thread is the same. It really doesn't matter. So I go around and around. I don't count how many times. And then I leave one of the beads here in the front and just keep going. And then after so many turns, I leave another bead. Now it's important that the bead can move up and down and does not get stuck on the frame there on the bottom, but otherwise it's very easy. Now I started on the left corner on the top, so I will go all the way to the right, all the way back to the left. And now you can see what it looks like. It has lots of strings on it and I can uh, not together the beginning and the end of the strings makes it easier to secure them. And then I can begin using my fabric. Now I opted to only use fabric, but you can absolutely use other yarn, you can use lace, you can use anything you like to weave through. Here I am just knotting it to the leftover string just to secure it for the time being so it doesn't follow me through those strings and all now I have to do go up and down and again there's no counting you just randomly put your materials through the top strings in and out. The only trick here is that when you get to the next line that you don't use the same brown strings but you use different ones so it still will look like a weave and has some strength. And also the second important thing is go around the frame every time you come to the end. And then as you come through to the other side, turn your fabric, at least if you have a fabric which has definitely one positive side and one faded side, you want the nice colorful positive side on the top. And then I crunch up my material quite a bit because I like that look, but you definitely don't have to do that in which case it will be much faster to complete a project. 
Now, because the weave is so random, it really does not call for any tools. You can easily do it with your fingers like you see me do here. So I'm off to a good start and I'm actually weaving, yay! So I used the same color material for a few rows, but you can definitely change color every row or even in the middle of the row. Here at this point, you can see how I move up one of the beads. I position it on the top and when I weave in the next row, it will secure it to that position. I'm not trying to make a pattern with this beads or anything complicated, so this method works just fine. Here you see me attaching the next color of material in the same way I showed you earlier, and then I just keep going. Now weaving is very repetitious, of course, and usually I think also very time consuming. But with these rather big pieces of fabric, it went pretty quick to fill up the frame. Now, as I got towards the bottom of the frame, I used my crochet hook to help me pull the fabric through as it was getting too tight for my fingers. Here I used the hook again just to secure the end of the fabric to the bottom side of the frame. So my basic weave is done and you will get a much better look in just a moment. Here I'm just cleaning up some loose fibers. You get plenty of those when you work with ripped material. And then here it is, my completed piece in all its glory. Now you may have noticed that I only wove through the top layer of string and that's because the frame I picked is too thick to really get a proper weave using all the strings. Now, if you have a skinnier frame, you can definitely try to do it differently. Now, because my frame is square, it lends itself to be used like a diamond. So I will hang it up that way. But first, I want to add some more decoration. And for that, I use some of my leftover pieces of materials and make some tassels. So after cutting an initial size, I cut these pieces again into skinnier parts I also mix up the colors so the tassels uh, will look nice and have a nice shape. Now I think you all know how to make tassels, so I'm doing this part very fast, just tying it up and getting it ready to be attached to my frame. I also trimmed the bottom just a little bit and I made three of these tassels and here they are all done and I want to attach them to three of the corners on this little frame. Now, in order to attach anything that's hanging, it's always easier when you have a specific point to tie it to. So I use three more beads, some nails and my hammer to attach those beads to the corners. And now tying on the tassels is super easy and they hang nicely. Uh, when they're once secured, I use my crochet hook to pull through the end pieces of thread. And again, I secure them to the back of the frame. The only thing left to do now is to cover the back. Now that's not absolutely necessary, but I had this piece of red cardboard laying around from an old book cover and it completed the project nicely. So let's take a final look. I attached the red cardboard just using E6000. I left a corner free on the top, so it's easy to hang this thing up on the wall. Now I'm rather happy with the result of my first weaving project. I know it is crazy colorful, but it was a great way to use up all those leftover pieces. I'm of course already thinking of how to use this type of simple, simple weaving technique to make other projects, maybe something less colorful, maybe some more natural fibers like burlap or cotton or different type of rope. I will definitely also look out for different size frame, maybe something more rustic, maybe something rectangular. Who knows? I absolutely enjoyed working on this as it was a new thing and new and different is always good, right? So thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this time with me. See you really soon again and bye bye for now. Mm -hmm.